Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the Rumpled One. It's Tuesday, November the 27th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading. Distraction. Normally, I talk about focus. That you have to be focused. You have to pay attention, all those things. But today, I want to talk about distraction because distractions are the things that make it hard for you to focus. And there's many distractions, external distractions and internal distractions. I was listening to a podcast this morning and the guy talked about the 15 takeaways from this retreat that they had. 400, you know, heavy hitters from the world, you know, attended, he, you know, he name dropped some big names. And I got to thinking, What makes these people so great, so interesting that I should be distracted by them? Because that's what things are. All the advertisement, all the emails, all the podcasts, all the YouTube, everything is a distraction. They want your attention. They want you to focus on them. And I realized something that if you're not clear about what you want to do, it's so easily for these distractions to take over. It really is. I mean, it's so easy to be distracted because most of us walk around with a cell phone in our pocket or on our hip or in our bag, right? And if that sucker rings, doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, like the dog hearing the bell, you're going to salivate and, and reach for that device. That's why my device is set on either mute, silence, or vibrate. My phone does not ring, it vibrates. So if it's not in my pocket, I don't hear it ring. And some people have a problem. Why didn't you answer my call? Why didn't you do this? It's because I was doing something else and I didn't want to be distracted. Once you decide what's important to you, then it's easy to not be distracted. I mean, if you hold what's important to you, you know, in the front of your mind, and you give it your attention, and that's what you're focused on, there's not going to be any distraction. But if you look away or look up or look around, easy to be distracted. You walk into a room, and you knew what you were going for in that room. You get there, and something catches your eye, or you hear something, you're distracted. And then you do like three or four things, you leave the room and you forgot why you walked in the room in the first place. And you got to, then when you remember, you got to go back and do it. That's total distraction. What's all this got to do with trading? Well, maybe one day I should show you my inbox and you will see all the distractions I get. This system's going to make you money. That system, our latest system. And what's so funny is it's like those uh, TV commercials where they uh, throw in a box of Ginsu knives. Because, I mean, if their original system was that good, and they get this new system, well, what about the original system? I mean, a lot of you could say, well, hey, Rumpled One, you know, uh, you know, you got the buy zone, and you got the whole low, and you got the wick, and you got this, and you got that, so aren't you doing the same thing? Well, you could say that, but as you know, as we go through the charts, you can see that most of these systems are based off of one horizontal lines, two usually an open price, or three a high low. So they're basically derivations of the same thing with a you know just a slightly different twist. You might use slightly different you know frequency distribution statistics, but they're all involving the, they all revolve around the same thing, which is, you know, a horizontal line cross, whether it's the open, 
a high, a low, a midpoint. They're all horizontal line crosses. It's just that simple. I mean, I even did the random number holo you know, horizontal line cross, oh God, over a decade ago to prove that you can make money, you you know, trading with uh, three randomly placed horizontal lines. You just, you know, pick three numbers at random through um, 0, 0, and 99, set horizontal lines there, and just go with the direction of price. And talk about distraction. Right now, <laughs> my phone's vibrating. It's too funny. But you see, I'm, I'm focused on this video, so I'm not going to be distracted by the phone. That's simple. So let's go on to the charts. And one thing that you cannot be distracted from is your money and risk management. It's just way too important. Way too important. So, where are we here? Well, we're still below the current and previous midpoints here. I believe the euro yen has pulled back even further uh, from that current midpoint. And you see here on the week, it fell out of that upper wick zone. And you see here by about, oh, 30 pips. So, anybody taking that weekly wick zone trade will have profited now as you can see there's two pairs that have not filled the gap yesterday i believe there was three and when we did the video sunday night i think there may have been four or five so there's still time for those of you who haven't traded the gap trade and as you can see on the daily, it entered the previous day's upper wick zone, failed to break out, so it came the other way. And you can see right now we're 25 pips to the good off of that, off of the open. And as far as range goes, you can see an anemic day for the Euro Yen, clocking in at 49 right now, only four pips off the current low. And you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five pairs over 100 for the range. And with the new beast clocking in at 216 pips. We had a short right here. We, we've got a missed pivot. Oh, wait a minute. This is dollar yen we got to go back to euro yen there we go and let's see we had the daily open we had the pivot below the short zone so we were looking to fade and it hit the pivot there was a winner winner chicken dinner back up through the open into the buy zone as you can see this would have been should have been a scratch trade now if you hung in there and you had your stop loss here maybe you got the part of this spike but you can see here once again through the short zone and hit the pivot again you can see it hit the short zone and hit the pivot again, short zone, hit the pivot again, short zone, hit the pivot again. This short zone did not, but you can see here it's making higher lows. So right here, that should have been a scratch trade. Otherwise, you would have stopped out either above the daily open there or in, well, it didn't actually get above there. So maybe if you rode that out, you were sweating that stop. And, but you can see here it hit the pivot again. So you could have had a win, or if you just entered here, there's a winner. Once again, it tried, it failed to break the daily open, came back down in the short zone, pro trade, once again, hit the pivot. And the pivot was only about five pips away. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times five is 35 if you were trading it. Not, a, not bad. And you can see here with a 48 pip range, it's just bouncing between the rat zones. Really not much 
to write home about, but once again, handful of pips, handful of pips, handful of pips. Pivot, we took it out. Weekly pivot right here, monthly pivot up here. But since that's already been taken out and that's already been taken out, um, maybe it gives me an idea, but you know, I might have a, could put a switch. If it's been crossed, don't plot it. And it might be a different indicator. Actually, I already have it on this one. It's, if, it's, if it hasn't been crossed, it's plotted on the pivot. And once it's crossed, we don't plot. So once again, these two missed pivots. And as I stated before, you can just use horizontal lines. These are spaced at every 10 pips. But you just follow the same thing. You got a two ball red at the line. You got a one ball green at the line. One ball red at the line. Two ball looking for green at the line. And you can see here there was a lot of selling going on. And then some buying. You know, that just gave me an idea. Maybe I should have a total of buy ticks, sell ticks, wait ticks. I'll have to think about that. Maybe I should write it down. And as you can see here, once again, candle color at the line, you trade with it. My systems are all based. So you see, there's little to be distracted. No other indicators are on here to distract. Now, there was somebody who said they really liked the wick zones. Um, in fact, I was... It was interesting over on the Facebook group, the uh, what is it, TRO, the rumpled one on Facebook, whatever. Um, uh, trader posted, said he liked the wick zones and he had a really profitable trade. And then he followed it up with a one pip winner. And I was so proud to see that one pip winner because it means that this trader actually understands. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of a, a proud moment for me. So thank you for posting that. Much appreciated. Um, I like to see people benefit from what I do um, and what I share here. That's, you know, good feeling. I like to, you know, I've been trying to pay it forward for decades. And you can see here on the Holo setup, there was a, you know, opportunities here. Right now, we've got an opportunity. We can go long at 128.41. It's a Larry Live trade. Okay. You can see here, back in the way back here, here, this H4 inventory reduction bar, and it definitely paid off. We had a long trigger here at 43. There was a second, there's a short trigger down here at 37 so you've got larry live trade situation short 37 long 43 and one of my favorite screens you can see here it was dancing around the previous week's open and you know candle color at the line and then it fell back through and you can see where it is now and once again we've just had a few little motion to the downside not much to write home about and as far as einstein like goes here there's a quick pop oh good for four or five pips you just have to take it when it gives it now we're back in for another larry live trade so that's it okay traders don't let distractions distract you okay just just don't don't give them the time of day so in the meantime just remember and never forget it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so go out there and drain the banks